Yo, what is up guys, Randy here. Today we're gonna to be talking about the techniques and equipment that you need to start taking long exposure landscape photos. So, let's get into it. All right guys, so there's a few pieces of equipment that you're gonna to wanna to have before you start taking long exposure landscape photos. Uh, the first one's just gonna be a tripod, a nice sturdy tripod. And you can typically find one on Amazon for about 50 to $100. I would just say if you search them up on Amazon, just don't buy the Amazon Basics one because it's not very sturdy. Um, and then the next thing that you're gonna wanna buy is a neutral density filter. And if you don't know what a neutral density filter does, it essentially just blocks light from coming into your camera sensor. So it acts almost like a shade. Um, and that's gonna let us get away with longer exposure times. So the next thing that you're gonna wanna get, and this one is a bit optional, is gonna be a remote shutter release. And what this is gonna let you do is it's gonna let you take exposures longer than 30 seconds um, in your camera. That way you can use the bulb setting and you can actually hold it for as long as you want to. And that'll let you just kind of experiment a little bit more with long exposure. So now that you kind of know the equipment that you need, I figured let's just hop into the camera settings and see what, what we need to optimize for and what our camera settings should be looking like. So with long exposure landscape photography, it's called long exposure because your shutter speed is open for a really long time, allowing a lot of light to hit your sensor. So that's what we're gonna wanna optimize for is long shutter speeds. So that's gonna mean dropping our ISO as low as possible, um, anywhere to 50 or 100, depending on what your camera goes to. And then it's also gonna mean closing down our aperture to f8, f11, f16. And that's just something you're gonna to wanna to play around with. I typically keep mine at around f8 just because that is where most of my lenses are at their sharpest. Now you can go down further, you can go to f22. Um, the reason I don't is that you start to get a little bit softer photos when you start to drop to f22 and above that. So I typically just recommend staying between f8 and f16. So now that we've optimized our aperture and our ISO for long exposures, the next thing that we're gonna play with is the shutter speed. And typically how I like to start is I like to keep all of my ND filters off of my camera. And what I like to do is I like to see what the exposure should look like without any ND filters. So for example, say I'm shooting at F8 at ISO 100, and then I start to play around with my shutter speed to see where my light meter goes to zero. Let's say that's at one second. So now I have a baseline. So at one second at 100 ISO at F8, I know that my picture is gonna be perfectly exposed. So now that I have that baseline, I can start to do a little bit of the math in my head. So I can see what type of ND filter I have. So let's say I have a six stop ND filter. So to get back to that same exposure, we're gonna have to increase our shutter speed by six stops when we put our ND filter on. So if we were at one second, we would go to two seconds, four seconds, 8 seconds, 16 seconds, 32 seconds, 64 seconds. So it would take a 64 second exposure with a 6 stop ND filter to get the same exposure as we would with that 1 second exposure to get a properly exposed photograph. Now that you have that baseline, you can start playing around with your ND filters and your other settings to get the type of exposure that you want. So in the example I gave you, we were at 1 second at f8 at ISO 100 and I had a six stop ND filter. And that six stop ND filter would take me to a 64 second exposure at those settings. Now say that that's the only ND filter I have, but I don't quite want that exposure. So now we can play around with our other settings. Now what you can do, because we dropped our other settings to their lowest, is you can start playing with those, and then you can play with your aperture as well, just like you normally would. So say that you put your ISO up to 400, so now we've gained four stops. So we can drop our shutter speed by four stops. So we would go from 64 seconds to 32 seconds to 16 seconds to eight seconds. So by playing with our ISO and going from 100 to 400, um, we've cut down our shutter speed from 64 seconds to eight seconds. So if you can see, if you get that baseline, then once you put your ND filters on, then you can start to play around with the other settings. Getting that baseline though is really important so that you know where your optimal exposure is. If you try to do this with your ND filter on, the meter is not going to really read properly. So that's why it's always good to do it with your ND filter off, see what the optimal exposure is, then put your ND filter on and then you can start to play around with your other settings depending on how long you want your shutter speed to remain open. Another quick tip is to actually get your focus while your ND filters are off also. Um, typically your camera has a hard time using the autofocus with your ND filter, so that's another quick tip. 
That's pretty much it for this one, guys. I hope you found this video helpful. Hit that like button, subscribe. I got a lot more content coming. And of course, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.